Uh, for those of you that are interested, I want to apologize in advance for any technical difficulties we might have because we got a $500 microphone supported by a $300 boom and stand, and it's held together with rubber bands. All right, from just, Home Depot. Just for the hell of it. Not Home Depot, Office Depot. Just to let you know in case something happens. Hey, we're in a top deck group over here. So, hey, welcome to the September uh, series. Now, we have a problem because I think we lost the August taping. Because we, can't we lost the August taping. I know no, we, we made it. I know we made it. I know. But I, we don't know where it is. So uh, welcome to September. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll do August next so year. So tell us. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've been doing a lot of research, Ed, uh -oh. on the club and my dad and the business and all that stuff. And then you, of course, have looked up forty years ago, which would be September nineteen seventy eight. Yeah. Um. I, you know, every, it's it's really ridiculous, Paul. Every time I do this, I'm going. Up, you got to be kidding. <laughs> You gotta be kidding. We, okay, the white was Stone Creek Gray Riesling oh, no. for two dollars and twenty-five cents. The red was Renato Roddy Barolo. No way. By Renato Roddy Barolo, right wow. there, five dollars and seventy-nine cents. A fifth. A fifth. Okay, and I'm sitting there going. Try and touch that today. Well, actually, to be quite honest with you, they're not that expensive. You know, you'd spend sixty to seventy bucks for it, but still. I mean, first of all, how many people drank Barolo in 1978? The same people that drank Rioja, Marcato Rescal Reserva that he featured in 72, you know? So you're talking about the, the rarity and the idea that these wines have progressed, right? So I had Michael Broadbent's son in here. Yeah. Bartholomew, Mark. you know. Yeah, I know. And he was looking at this lit rack of old selections going back to my father's. Oh, and this is the wine. And he found this Cotascal 77. He goes, do you have any idea what this is? I go, it's a wine my dad featured. There's our sticker. Yeah. He says, that was touted as the best wine ever to leave Argentina, ever. And this bottle right here is a $2,000 bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine uh, that? And he, don't you have he, to go to the bathroom? So he, asked, <laughs> so he asked me to, so he took a picture with me holding it. Then he wanted me to take a picture of the back label who brought it in here. He sent all this to the winery in Argentina because he was so fascinated with the idea that this bottle was sitting And they are now flying him out to Argentina with that bottle to enjoy with the winemaker's son uh, since the winemaker passed away 10 years well, ago. Well, <laughs> you know, we were, uh, my mom sent me an article in the New York Times about uh, a tasting at Lafitte recently where they tasted like these groups of wines. So the 20th century, all the way back to the 19th century, they tasted some wines from 1800s, as well as the 62, as mm -hmm. well as the 45, the 88, all those wines. And they tasted them in the very room that I tasted uh, at Lafitte. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, concurrent to that, while I was looking up the wines concurrent from 40 that. years ago. That can't be right. Is it concurrent to that? It is concurrent to that. It's, but it's not concurrent to this. Oh. Um, there, your dad had a, a Lazenby Devan tasting plan. 1975 uh, California Cabernet and 1975 Bordeaux. Now, what were the Bordeaux? Lafitte. Wow, Mouton really? Obreon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I didn't, there wasn't a price on it, but I'm sure they, they were all like 12 bucks. Actually, I'm glad you said that because this Saturday's tasting at the Wine of the Month Club here at 12 to 5 here in Monrovia, California, we are, oh, wait a minute, by the time you get this video, I won't even know. Well, we are tasting, uh, the, you know, we taste some of the wines in the selections, but then Oliver, uh, Oliver Oscar's uh, specialty flight, which is an additional charge, are same vintage, same grape. Europe versus America. Oh, wow. That, fun? that sounds cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's uh, the preamble here for, to the things. Enjoy your next video. <whistles> oh, Thank you. I've never met him. Oh, that's yeah. better. Okay. So I did that. To <laughs> Welcome to the limited <laughs> series of the bit. Wine of the Month Club for mm. September 2018. Didn't we just do January? I swear to God, it was last that's week ridiculous. we did January. The fact that we're just working on the Christmas catalog or finishing up right now because it's, it's due to get stuffed in the boxes October 1st and arranged for all the stuff we need to get Christmas gifts going. Though, you know, it's a very important season for the wine business, so we're happy to do it, Ed. I'm thrilled, I'm sure. Hey, I, I took, this is, a, this is a, I was, took this home last night and I made a um, bolognese that was heavy on the beef. Heavy on the beef. And one of the new, one of our vendors that used to sell us wine, Mission Wines of Spirit, he used to sell some really fun stuff, but he was also a waiter. He now is bringing in his own wines. He's now, he's left the restaurant and he's also bringing in um, Mon, Marzan, Marzan, what's the tomato? Oh, San Marzano? Yeah. Okay. 
In a can, in, in a can, of course. Are they real San Marzano? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. No, they're next door. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's just like the wine business. Yes, yeah, right next it's to right Opus. Next door. <laughs> okay. But <clears throat> it was great. So last night I put it in a pan. I sautéed some onions and some olive oil. I just let that stuff simmer for about a half an hour. With and I broke the tomatoes up, and I, so I uh, put some beef in there. In this wine, it took a little while to open up, and then it. And then I looked at the label, I go, ah, no wonder it's so interesting. It's Columbia Valley. Washington State. Yes. This, you know, this is one of those instances that I get, it get really upsets me because they go, well, we don't have much on this winery. We don't have much on this winery. So, so I do a little digging and I come to find out this is a big deal wine from, from a big deal winemaker that was put together by several people. They're not sure they want to keep doing it, but they come up with this great wine and you, don't, you just kind of wonder why. So I, I, I kept tasting it and going, wow. Again, I had forgotten. I don't remember the brand, the, the label, this Pacific Crest, and it's a silk screen label, until I saw uh, Columbia Valley. And I go, oh, no right. wonder it tastes like this. Well, I they think got, it's quintessentially... They got a big deal female winemaker that makes this wine that, you know, has got a tremendous uh, reputation in, the, in, uh, in, in Washington. With obviously ties to St. Michel because, you know, they, <laughs> they control 80% of the grapes in the Washington state. It's classic Washington Columbia Valley. It's got chocolate it's got a lot of chocolate. coffee mm -hmm. it's dense uh, it's not it's a little fruit forward in the nose but it kept changing in the glass i was fascinated by this last night so much i drank the whole bottle 26.95 on the shelf 15.99 uh reorder price and i would have 98 on this too yeah i don't know very very nice wine surprisingly uh Cabernet because it doesn't it has almost a Syrah like component. It's typical. To it. Look at the look at the density of the Oh color. yeah, really but yeah, you get they get very dark fruit up there. Because they leave them on the on the vine longer, you know. Mm. So Merci Bion. And now for something completely different. Stick Man Vineyards. I thought this I thought this is a hoot. I think the wine is incredible. It's a 2012 Cabernet from Paso. I believe it's in Paso, though it says California, but I think that the wine's extraordinary, and I think the idea of the stick man thing is really cute. And it's okay. So I went to uh, Torani. Have you been to Torani downtown? Torani, Torani, the Eighth and Spring. No, no, I don't go downtown. I, I don't either, but I went to a tasting there with Matthew Bradman, with Michael Bradman. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. Bartholomew. So all over the all over the place there are these. All of his paintings, artists, the artists, all over the restaurant. Okay. What's that got to do with the wine? Well, it's his, it's, it's his artistry. Oh, he did the label? Yeah. Oh, well, then that's why. Because it's a stick man. Mm -hmm. Some stick figures spend a lot of time trying to prove their people. So that's and hilarious. Same problem with winemakers. That's that's what happened here, okay, and that that was the lead to the story about this wine. But mm. you know, the fact is, who cares what the story is? Although I'd like to have a story, uh, the wine's out of this world. I mean, it's showing its age really nicely. Yeah, it really is. But you know, the other thing that's surprising about this wine and a couple of the others we've had is they don't taste like Paso Robles mm -hmm. from, from the standpoint that they're not they're not hot climate grapes. All right, because I think primarily because they've learned how to deal with the climate, and mm. but wow, I mean this is a very good lesson in aging Cabernet. Twenty four ninety five on the shelf, fifteen ninety nine. I'm at a ninety eight on this too. Yeah, I just mm. you know it's interesting. The two thousand twelve human conditions it is, um, doesn't it doesn't show as much age as this one does, but I'm really enjoying this. Well, yeah, but Paul, Dark the same fruit. thing I said before. This wine has been in a perfectly temperature-controlled cellar since it was bottled. Okay, mm -hmm. that's going to make a big difference. This was probably kept at fifty-five degrees since yeah, it was bottled. For sure. Okay, so that's going to taste different, you know. Mm. Anyway, so what are you rating this? Or I'll you give you a ninety. I'm I'm flabbergasted. Okay, I keep wanting to taste it. I keep wanting you to. You want some more? <laughs> Oh, he's hanging around, hanging around, hanging around, hanging around. You know, right. every now and then he comes up with a wine. Last month it was Hanley. This month it's Adler Fells from the old days. Yeah. You know, I mean, these were wine. These are wines I was drinking close to fifty years ago with your dad. You know, and they were great then, and they're great now. 
this is uh, the, the, this was the winner yesterday at the staff tasting for the whites. What a surprise! And it, you know, I told them it's a, it's feminine, but it's and it's elegant, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, it's complex. You know, we tasted it next to that heritage uh, stainless steel uh, mm. wine from the south of oh, France, and so they were the, able to see the difference. But this is just, I'm thinking barrel fermented, maybe. Just touch of oak, just of subtle, a little bit of, of vanilla, of a little oak. bit of spice, but. You know, it's really, it's so cool to have been doing this as long as I have and to find a bottle of wine like this that I've been familiar with for half a century and they're still making great wines. They're still yeah. making great wines, you know. You can't say that about too many people in this state, believe me. Just really good. Really, really good. I mean, just spectacular. You might find it for twenty three ninety eight on the shelf if you find it, but it, it would be twenty three ninety eight. I looked that up, and you can get it for thirteen ninety nine. Thirteen ninety nine is a killer price. This is a classy, classy Chardonnay. I'm doing a ninety nine. Mm. Just keeps going. And it's a two thousand fifteen. You never know it. I don't know. You would not know it, Ed. Well, two thousand fifteen. Don't forget, two thousand fifteen was a great vintage. So I mean, the vintage rules no matter what. So ah. last night, uh, also with this Pacific Crest Cab, I had a Boca Rosa, which is from the Volpi district, uh, Lazio in Italy. And I told San Diego, this has to be volcanic soil. It was so complex. Well, okay, first of all, well, yeah, this is Verdicchio. All right, you know, Verdicchio is the Chablis of Italy. You know, it's phenomenal. What the, what the hell's wrong with you? Hmm. Oh, so you want me to get off the cup? I was talk, actually, I was talking about a different wine, but that's okay. This is really good. I, what's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, you know, this nose is amazing. This wine, I tell you, the, when when I think about the my favorite whites in the world, okay, in it from any country, Verdicchio is probably in the top three. Okay, absolutely out of this world. Top three, wow. Oh, this, these wines are so good, and for come on, this is thirteen dollars and ninety nine cents. I would compare this with Premier Cru Chablis, which is 60 bucks. I would, too. I mean, it has earthiness. It has chalk. It has soil. It has some shy fruit. It's got gripping acidity. It's got a little orange zest, a little yeah, lime in it. I mean, it's just got... Definitely the zest. There's so much complexity in there, and this is absolutely out of this world. I mean, you remember the, the Vernacci used to come in the bottles that were shaped like a fish? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we used to sell it at the store. Well, I'm fascinated by this wine, too, but I've always loved indigenous Italian whites, but they have to be well-made, and this is really well-made. I did a funny column once. I forgot where it appeared about. What if, <laughs> That's great. What, what if everybody bottled the wine in a bottle shape like what it would go with? This wine goes with liver. This wine goes with kidneys. <laughs> this wine goes with pork butt. You're, you're, <laughs> you're onto something, Ed. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, and, and where it is, you want some. <laughs> you know, I like that idea. I'll consult my lawyer. If he tells me to do it, I'll get a new lawyer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like me and doctors. If he tells me I drink too much, I'll get another doctor. <laughs> All right. I don't know. 100 points Well, on I read wine. that drinking wine was bad for your health, so I stopped reading. <laughs> okay, so it's not my joke. I, I know that. it's still funny though you know all right i don't know 190 101 points give me i, I almost never met a vernatch i didn't like okay I mean, ever i'm serious about I mean, verdicchio you, well verdicchio that too <laughs> i'm going i was misspelled it ends with an a <laughs> well the problem is for me when you talk about white wines from italy there's the three v's vernaccia vermentino and verdicchio Okay. Ah, the three V's. The three V's. You, you almost cannot go Which would go be on. a W and one V. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> but don't be confused. This is Stellaria, not to be confused with Stellarosa, which is a sweet, bubbly wine. Ooh. This is great. It is, I'll give it, I'll give it a 99. So, this is so good. <laughs> Cheers, folks.